support you every step of the way. And just like Americans always do, the nation will come together to help you rebuild your homes, businesses, and communities stronger and more resilient than ever before. Four years ago, I introduced to you a builder, an entrepreneur, an outsider, and the people's nominee for President of the United States. Tonight, I stand before you as the proud daughter of the people's president. He is our commander in chief, champion of the American worker, defender of common sense, and our voice for the forgotten men and women of this country. He is our president and my father, Donald J. Trump. This evening, I want to tell you about the leader I know and the moments I wish every American could see. I want to tell you the story of a president who is fighting for you from dawn to midnight, when the cameras have left, the microphones are off, and the decisions really count. When Jared and I moved with our three young children to Washington, we didn't exactly know what we were in for, but our kids, our kids loved it from the start. My son, Joseph, promptly built Grandpa a Lego replica of the White House. The president still displays it on the mantle of the Oval Office right over there so that he can show world leaders just so they know he has the greatest grandchildren on earth. I agree. <laughs> Over the last four years, we've learned a lot. I've seen in Washington it's easy for politicians to survive if they silence their convictions and skip the hard fights. I couldn't believe so many politicians actually prefer to complain about a problem rather than fix it. I was shocked to see people leave major challenges unsolved so they can blame the other side, campaign on the same issue in the next election. But Donald Trump did not come to Washington to win praise from the Beltway elites. Donald Trump came to Washington for one reason and one reason alone, to make America great again. My father has strong convictions. He knows what he believes and he says what he thinks. Whether you agree with him or not, you always know where he stands. I recognize that my dad's communication style is not to everyone's taste, and I know that his tweets can feel a bit unfiltered, but the results, the results speak for themselves. He is so unapologetic about his beliefs that he has caused me and countless Americans to take a hard look at our own convictions and ask ourselves, what do we stand for? What kind of America do we want to leave for our children? I am more certain than ever before we want a future where our kids can believe in American greatness. We want a society where every child can live in a safe community and go to a great school of their choice. We want a culture where differences of opinion and debate encouraged, not canceled, where law enforcement is respected, where our country's rich diversity is celebrated, and where people of all backgrounds, races, genders, and creeds have the chance to achieve their God-given potential. This is the future my father is working to build each and every day. <laughs> Building, after all, is what he's done his whole life. He's admired and befriended construction workers on countless job sites. But it has been a new and profound experience for him and for me to see these stoic machinists and steel workers come to him with a tear in their eye and thank him for being the only person willing to go to the mat for them, for their jobs, for their families, and for their futures. To the hardworking men and women across America and here tonight, you are the reason my father fights with all of his heart and all of his might. You are the reason he ran for president in the first place, and you are the reason he is going to keep fighting for four more years.
summer evening in early February of 2018. We were in the Oval Office with my father's top economic advisors and the president was pushing to keep the promise he made to renegotiate the bad trade deals that had gutted millions of middle class jobs. Most of his advisors argued that the economy was so strong following our historic tax and regulatory cuts that it didn't make sense to risk rocking the boat. After the meeting, as I walked with my father back towards the residence, he said, you know, the reason this has never been done before is because our leaders haven't had the guts. When the economy is good, they settle for good, and when things are bad, they don't have the will or ability, so they kick the can until it's someone else's problem. He was right. If my father didn't take on these fights, no one would. In the months that followed, President Trump refused to settle for a good deal. He wanted a great deal, and ultimately, that is exactly what we got. I remember each time he was updated on the progress of the new trade deal with Mexico and Canada. He would say, don't let down those dairy farmers I met in Wisconsin. I don't want them to like this deal. I want them to love it. <laughs> Today, in the midst of this unprecedented global pandemic, it's more clear than ever that our president was absolutely correct to take on trade when he did and bring our jobs, our factories, and our life-saving medicines back to the USA. As our nation endures this great trial, I pray for the families who are mourning the loss of a loved one, for those who are battling COVID-19, and for the first responders and the healthcare heroes who remain on the front line of this fight. The grief, sorrow, and anxiety during this time is felt by all. I've been with my father, and I've seen the pain in his eyes when he receives updates on the lives that have been stolen by this plague. I have witnessed him make some of the most difficult decisions of his life. I sat with him in the Oval Office as he stopped travel to Europe. I watched him take the strongest, most inclusive economy in a lifetime, the lowest unemployment in a half century, and the highest wage increase for working families in decades, and close it down to save American lives.